Um, it's devastating. Yeah, it kind of like rips your spirit a little bit, but it's only temporary for me. I, I'm a single mom, three girls. So there's no time to sit and cry about it. And it's just like, what can I do to fix it now? So, um, you know, I've had support with my friends and family. Um, my oldest has helped me a whole lot. And um, great doctors, you know. It's been hard, but um, it's just something you just have to go fix it. That's how I'm like a fixer. So give me the problem and then we're going to fix it. It wasn't a lot of like, why me? Why me? It was just, wow, this is a bad setback, but I'm going to, I'm going to get through it, get better. Working at a little company, uh, you kind of mentioned just how, how much, um, just what's it done like to make a transition from a nurse to a patient? Um, it seems like a pretty... It was. I have so much respect now with, with my patients. It's just a different feeling because I know what it's like to sit in a hospital bed for days and, you know, really like lose a sense of yourself as a patient. You just, you know, so I really try now with my patients to let them feel like I'm there for them in a more personal way. Um, and have you um, like participated in, in the walk at all or working in 15 years now? So they've, they've benefited from from the walk of uh, 16 or 17 years. So right. Have you been able to kind of see you know, the impact of the breast cancer walk has on the hospital? Or? I have, yeah, I've seen, I haven't participated, um, but I've, I always usually work Mother's Day, honestly. Like I actually work this Mother's Day. Uh -huh. It always ends up being on a Sunday and it, I end up working, but, um, yeah, I've seen how much it, it's impacted and talking through, um, Dr. Taft was my original surgeon and she kind of informed me a lot about it and, um, you know, like what the funds go for and how like every penny is not, you know, going anywhere other than for the breast cancer patients, the breast cancer center. Um, so yeah, I heard nothing but good things about it. What do you maybe tell tell your daughter? She goes, mom, and your mom, three girls. What do you, what do you tell them as you, as you to go through this? Yeah, um, two of them are young. So, you know, the youngest was, she was like five when this happened. So it wasn't much telling her, but my oldest, of course, being 17, she, um, I just, you know, I told her that, you know, she was with me actually the second time because I got diagnosed the third time with um, cancer during radiation. And it was kind of like, who gets diagnosed during treatment? You know, so I actually got uh, another tumor on my scar site on my mastectomy during radiation. So it was like right in the middle of radiation, I had to stop, have another surgery and restart all over. So, you know, she, she was there for me a lot, my oldest, and um, she saw, she was with me when I was diagnosed and she saw, you know, what, what I went through and the, the pain and um, being girls. It's very, um, you know, I worry about them and their health in the future. My grandmother actually died of breast cancer at 36, and they thought it was genetic, you know, being that she was so young, but they did all my genetic testing and it was all negative. So it's kind of scary. Um, what, maybe, what message do you want to say to other women going through what, what you're going through or something similar to what you're going through? Um, Basically, I know it's cliche, but take it one day at a time. Because when I would think about, you know, six weeks of radiation, three months of chemo, six cycles, I kept thinking about the numbers and how it was, oh, it's overwhelming. So I would, you know, just try and think of it as, okay, you know, one more session done, you know, 10 more to go, you know, like as a, just get through the day. Especially as a mom, it's like, you know, you're sidetracked, you know, you're trying to help them with, all of their needs and you just try and live a norm, as normal of a life as you can during treatment and then rest and recover. Uh, and finally, you know, like you are, you know, like the, the spokesperson for the walk is what is the term Any thoughts on kind of being, you know, put into a nice spotlight like that? It's nice. It, I feel honored. I do. I feel honored. Um, Little company has done so much for me, from from the doctors to the nurses over there, and um, 
you know, like the giving campaign at work even that I didn't even know existed until they ended up helping me um, with, you know, I was like three months behind with my car bill. Just so much financial stress because I wasn't working in, um, you know, had all my bills still. Um, and they helped, they helped me so much and I, I, yeah, very, very, very grateful. So you were, you were out of work for a whole year? Yeah. Yeah, I just went back to work five weeks ago, so. Um, so how, can I ask, you know, how, how's your mindset now? How do you feel? How do you feel today? I feel, I feel good because I had a PET scan recently that didn't show cancer anywhere in my body, so that's a positive thing that helped me. I was, you know, stressing about it until I got the results. That helped me, you know, say, okay, I'm... I may mean, not be like cancer free or in remission as they say right now, but there's no cancer in my body right now. So that that helped me, made me feel safe somewhat. I have a lot of side effects from the chemo, like neuropathy and um, issues with my arm, that, with the lymph lymphedema. Um, but I think, I try and think those are, those are minor things, you know. Anything else you can think of to add about how how you stay strong during something like this, or anything else? You can, any other just thoughts about this whole life detour? I found like a little bit of God, I guess you would say. You know, I wasn't very religious. I'm still not very religious, but I'd say spiritual. You know, I when I felt, you know, who do I? I felt helpless, and I needed guidance sometimes during it because I couldn't go to my, my I mean I was like my mom I couldn't go to my kids and you know I had to be strong and I found I think I found some faith because a lot of prayer and I have a good friend who's very faithful and she you know would constantly ask for prayers through her friends and groups and um, I started praying and I didn't pray before I, I didn't um, I, I found myself praying every day and not even just um, asking for things but thanking God that you know I have another day and thanking God that you know my kids are healthy God, that is prayer for sure prayer and God I think I found for this oh fighter for sure I think fighter I don't feel like a survivor yet I feel like I'm still surviving but I don't feel like I've completely surpassed it yet. I'm not at that point yet, but I definitely feel like I'm a fighter and I'm fighting every day. Um, mentally, physically, emotionally, all of it. So fighter is a definite, a good description. Okay, my name is Jennifer Suzumbo and I'm a fighter.